Hello and welcome to this Correct Sentence Structure Communication Parse Syntax Grammar lesson video. In this video, I'm going to be auditing a comment that was sent to me on my YouTube channel, which I did do a brief audit of it in my community section of the YouTube channel, if you caught that. I also said that I was going to give more detailed closure on it in a video, and this is that video. I'd like to preface this by saying that my former position on comments and emails and, and things like this would be to just pretty much ignore it as harmless uh, just because of the nature of what it is. Now, the only exceptions to this have been somewhat hostile comments and emails that I will then take and audit. And I will also audit uh, grammar from other individuals who have slandered me in the public. But what do I do? I concentrate on the grammar. I don't concentrate on character. I don't make assumptions about the mental condition of state of these individuals. I concentrate on the grammar because that is what I do and that is what is what this is all about. I mean, if one gets upset because they are being called to the carpet on their grammar knowledge, then that's their problem, not my problem. For me, it's not a problem. For me, it's a learning experience that I can share with my viewers who are serious about this grammar. I've tried to show again and again how this stuff works from every different angle that I can think of. I've even posted some things from Colin David Eiffel and Colin Miller to certify uh, what it is I'm saying because he's the one that brought it into the public. Now, I've also leveled some criticisms at some of the things he's done, but this is the way these things work with the humility is that things progress. There's stopping and correcting that must constantly be done. If one is not willing to grow and to learn, then one is going to be stuck in position and stagnate, which, in my opinion, a lot of these individuals have done. So this comment that I'm about to share with you is one such individual. Now, it's not such a bad thing. I mean, they don't slander me in any way, and they're not mean-spirited, but it is a bit condescending, and it does show a severe lack of grammar knowledge. So if someone levies a criticism at me and then I respond by auditing the grammar, it's not me being boastful or arrogant. I mean, with my position, it's me showing that first one must have a correct position in order to even step onto this geometric level playing field of communication contract known as correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. There are many ways that one can certify their knowledge. The first is by performance, which I'm going to show you there is avoidance of in this comment. There's also by performance in a video where someone's on video showing their face and their correct name to the public, teaching this stuff, showing that they have knowledge of it, putting accountability on themselves and putting this out into the public, showing a continuance of the evidence, like I just talked about in, uh, in my Quantum Grammar Shoot podcast about assumption presum uh, presumption. You got to perform on your claims if you're going to be claiming something. If not, then you don't have a position and you're just an adverb, verb, ad adjective, pronoun, la, la, land. So here we go with the audit. And to the author of uh, this comment, who, whomever he or she may be, you can contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and apply for a confidential correct grammar workshop if you wish. Just write to me and I'll set up a brief video consultation and uh, we'll see if you're serious about learning it. All right, here we go. 
going to share my screen. So here we see Colin David Eiffelwin, Colin Miller in front of the old dry erase board. And what I'm showing you in this area is the correct sequencing of positionals. You have for, which is the cause. You have of, which is the concern, i.e. consequence. You must have two points in which to draw a straight line. That's what these two position lodial fact phrases function as, these two points. So now that we've established that geometric plane field of communication, now we can put our verb in, which is singular, is in this case, because the singularity or plurality of a verb is based upon the singularity, plurality of the fact in the cause. Then we follow the verb with a possessive, with. Then we follow that with a concern of, and then another with, and then an of. And we always, always precede the authority with a possessive. So we have with and then the authority by. One positional, one function, one congruency, one meaning. And by congruency, I mean for is congruent with by, of is congruent with with. When we go backwards, it becomes for the perjury of the voidance. As I said earlier, you need two points with which to draw a straight line. Now we have our two points for the perjury of the voidance. Now we drop our verb in. Is. Is. With the rules, red codes. Of the correct sentence structure. With the contract of the possessive claim. We've already put the verb in, so we go on to the, the last possessive with the facts by the claimant's knowledge. That is correct sentence structure, sequencing in order to maintain the mathematical interface on the grammar and to keep the same value going forwards as we do going backwards. Now we're going to look at the comment that I was telling you about. Now, I'm not sure if this individual is male or female. So I'm going to try to take that into consideration. I don't mean any offense or harm to anyone out there. And what we're going to look at is the grammar here. And I'm going to do some markings in red ink to point these things out. So first I'm going to go through and look at the mechanics, uh, spelling, punctuation, uh, positional sequencing, so on and so forth, with regards to this, which I just went through and showed you, the correct sequencing of positionals and the four correct positionals. So just to reiterate real quick, one positional, one function, one congruency, one meaning. What I mean by that is for serves the function of the cause and for is congruent with by. Of serves the function of concern and is congruent with with. With serves the function of possessive and is congruent with of. By serves the function of authority and is congruent with for. Every sentence starts with a cause and ends with an authority. This is how the mathematical interface on the grammar uh, works. Those are the mechanics. I can't stress that enough. So here we go. So looking at the spelling and punctuation and things like that, this is not incorrect in the way that they have done the capitalization. They have capitalized the first letter in the sentence. 
in the sentences, but have capitalized no other words in the sentences, which is fine as long as they kept that consistency throughout here. So the first little mistake I see is in this word here, live life claims. That is singular. And the reason why it's singular is because we have an apostrophe S here, which denotes possessorship. Normally in correct sentence structure, if we see an apostrophe S attached to something before, usually there would be a hyphen and then another fact after it. But there isn't. So this is, what is live life claims possessing? Is it possessing the positional with? We don't know. And what about the positional with? Is that correct? We must have two position lodial fact phrases in front of the verb, yes. But it must be a cause and a concern in order to maintain the mathematical interface. Let's review what Colin David Eiff and Wynne Colin Miller had on the dry erase board. Cause, concern, for of, for the claimant's knowledge of the facts. It's not for the claimant's knowledge with the facts. It's for the claimant's knowledge of the facts. Because going backwards, it's going to have to be with the facts by the claimant's knowledge. Do you see why it's so important to maintain the correct sequencing of positionals? So this is incorrect. And this puts this whole thing into adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, as if it wasn't already. So then we have a compound fact, the fact names, and then R, A-R-E, which is a plural verb, which is not correct because live life claims, as we just certified, is singular. So the verb is not correct. Then they follow the verb with a concern. Again, let's go back to David Wynn Miller. The verb is followed by a possessive, always. Otherwise, the mathematical interface does not work. Of the two parties, by the fact contracts correct. Fact contracts correct. I would like to see this individual's correct sentence structure finite mean for that compound fact. In any case, this word contracts is no contract. And the reason being is that there is a particle of negation, contra. And you can look this up yourself in an etymology dictionary. Contra means no. That is why when I write the word contract, I write C-O-N hyphen T-R-A-C-T. That brings it into the positive performance domain. And I did a video on that, and you're more than welcome to uh, search that out. So now we have a period. So this is not correct sentence structure. Let's continue on. For the one fact, so we know that a vowel in front of a consonant is a particle of negation, so there we go. We have a particle of negation in our fact. Now I did a salvage on the OE. So this is the way that I spell one. Sorry, trying to write with this mouse is painful. So this is how I spell one, O-E-N. Two vowels in front of a consonant, that is positive performance. And again, you know, I got the video out there that explains and gives all the closures as to why I did that. So we have for the one fact, that's the cause, in the document. Okay, now here we go with this word in being used as a positional. Nowhere in David's sentence is the word in. There are four positionals, four of, with, by. They each have a function, one function. None of those have two functions, just one function and one congruency. None of them have two congruencies or three. It's just one, rule, one, rule, equal. Therefore, in, if we're going to use in, 
would have to have its own function and its own congruency. So in the domain of theory, what would be congruent within? The only thing I can think of is out. So how would that work backwards? And what function would that serve? We have a cause, we have a concern, we have a possessive, we have an authority. What would this be? So this in and of itself throws the whole thing into adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun. In the document is with the, okay, now here's another issue. We have a hyphen plication. This is sort of what I would call a dangling hyphen. <laughs> because hyphens in correct sentence structure are used to connect sevens. They're used to connect facts. And in this case, there is only one fact, plication. This, in brackets, is not here. And the only thing that precedes it is a lodial. And hyphens do not connect lodials in facts. They connect facts with facts, making compound facts or compound knowns. This is not the case. Again, one more continues to evidence that this is adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun. Then we have by the claim void. Claim void is a compound fact, but it's followed by a conjunction. And there's no period. So this makes no sense. And again, throws everything into adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun. So now I'm going to erase this and syntax it. I have found that for the beginner or even the intermediate, if you want to syntax something, starting at the end of the word group or the end of the sentence is the most efficient and effective way to go. Because if you go forwards, you're usually going to wind up getting to a point where you realize that you made a mistake and you got to go back and correct it and redo it. Whereas if you go backwards, that is a non-issue. So here we go. So we start with and. And is a non-tangible contract pronoun being colored by the tangible contract adjective claim hyphen void. The is a non-tangible contract adverb that is modifying the adjective claim void. And as I say to my students, something that you can put in your back pocket when you can certify that you've hit an adverb Everything that comes after the adverb, from the adverb, from this one, three, four on, is done. And you can take it away. And now begin afresh with the word by. By is non-tangible contract pronoun. And this is certified by the rule that nothing can follow a pronoun except for a break in the continuance of the evidence or an adverb. By is being colored by the tangible contract hyphen plication, which is being modified by the non-tangible contract adverb the. And again, we can take the 134, 134 and get rid of it. And now we start with with. With is non-tangible contract pronoun being colored by tangible contract is, which is being colored by tangible contract document, which is an adjective, which is being modified by the non-tangible contract adverb the. So adverb, adjective, adjective, pronoun. Sorry, this doesn't look too much like a three. Again, it's hard to write with a mouse. So the one, three, three, four, one, three, four, one, three, four can be taken away. We're done with that. And now we have tangible contract in as a pronoun, because nothing can follow a pronoun except for a break in the continuance of the evidence or an adverb, the one fact is tangible contract adjective, the non-tangible contract adverb, and then for is a pronoun. Let's move on to the next sentence. Facts, contracts, correct is a dangling participle verb being modified by non-tangible contract 
adverb the. By is a non-tangible contract pronoun being modified, colored by tangible contract two parties, which is being modified by non-tangible contract adverb the. You can take that all away. And of is non-tangible contract pronoun being colored by tangible contract are, which is being colored by tangible contract fact names, which is being modified by non-tangible contract adverb the. With non-tangible contract pronoun being colored by tangible contract live life claim hyphen s being colored, or I'm sorry, being modified by non-tangible contract adverb the, and then when you take, when we certified that the is an adverb, we can take all this stuff away for standing by itself as a for, a pronoun. And that's your syntax for that. Now, to address what is written in brackets in Babel, you are in part correct. You don't have two facts. Fact apostrophe S. Again, this denotes possession. So what is a fact possessing in this Babel scenario in your document? So it's saying you, I, I guess he means me. I don't have two facts in my document. I'm still not correct. We... I don't know what he means by he or she means by we need two facts in every document. Actually, in every correct sentence structure document that I have, there are multiple, multiple, multiple facts in there. In the most basic correct sentence structure sentence, for example, for the facts of the facts are with the facts by the facts. There are four facts in that sentence. And if you're going to use, um, the standard correct sentence structure sentence for the facts of the facts are with the facts of the facts with the facts by the facts there are seven facts in that sentence so to say how many facts you need i don't know if this individual is saying you only need two facts or you need at least two facts but in any document even you know like a name my name Colon, Jason, hyphen, Matthew, colon, glass. There are two facts there. But that's not a sentence. That's a name. In any case, I digress. So then after that, they go into all caps. Sorry, you sound like you are boasting. Bosting. I don't know what bosting is. I could guess he means boasting. He or she. Sorry, I keep doing that. Means boasting. So this is unclear. If they are apologizing to me because they think that I sound like I'm bosting, well, no harm done. I forgive you. No problem. Show us the performance in you claim. Colon Matthew. What is colon Matthew? That is the Second fact in the compound fact that is my name. So why is this individual doing that? Is that some sort of mistake or is there something else going on here? And this is what I mean by demeanor. And if you're new to this, um, I receive things like this quite often from this type of individual, from a certain sector of the quantum community. And so this is not new to me, although it may be new to you. This is a common demeanor. At times it can be very hostile, as I've mentioned, or at times it be, can be sort of benign, but covertly condescending. Passive aggressive, you might say. Show us the performance in you claim because you are not telling the people all the fact you need. How does this individual know all the fact that I need? And how do they know that I'm not telling the people? What people? 
So I see that uh, syntaxing this is, is necessary because this is definitely adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun. So we have the dangling participle verb here, need, being modified by the adjective you. Then we have fact, verb, being modified by the adverb the. All is a pronoun being colored by the adjective people, being modified by the adverb the. Telling is a verb being modified by the adverb not. R is a verb being modified by adverb you. And then because is a pronoun, Matthew stands by itself as a pronoun because of the break and it continues the evidence colon here and the period here. Uh, claim is a verb being modified by adverb you. In is a pronoun being colored by adjective performance. The is adverb. Us is a pronoun. Show is an adjective. Boston is a pronoun. R is adjective. You adverb. Like is a pronoun. Sound is an adjective. You is adverb. And sorry is pronoun. And that's that. This grammar is 90% psychological. And this is something that a lot of people get hung up on. Although I can't say for sure, that is what this individual seems to be experiencing. I can't say because I don't know what they're experiencing. I can just audit the grammar. It's what I do. And from the performance of their grammar, they are nowhere near closure on correct sentence structure. As I've just shown, using Colin David Eiffelwin, Colin Miller's own teachings. Because I knew that if I just put mine up here, it wouldn't hold as much weight, perhaps, especially with someone like this individual who appears to be, and this is just an opinion, this is just a guess on my part, the individual appears to be using the type of correct sentence structure that was used 10 or 15 years ago before I came along. I'm not saying that I did anything special. What I did do was try to fill the void of the why. Like when you watch the videos of Colin David Eiffel and Colin Miller, he teaches you how to do things, but he never really teaches why. That's what I tried to do. And that's what I'm trying to do in this video, teach you why this individual's grammar is not correct. I mean no harm by it. A lot of people will contact me and say, why, why do you do things like this, Jason? Why can't we all get along? I would humbly suggest that instead of perhaps directing your energy towards this venue, direct it outward towards those venues who contact me in such a way. Because I did not ask this individual to come aboard my vessel or any of the other individuals who are more hostile than this individual. I did not ask them to come aboard my vessel. They requested to come aboard my vessel. They do it. And I'm offering Kuliana in a educational manner to show that one must have a position first before one can level any type of criticism with regards to correct sentence structure. Now, as far as any of the other stuff about my character and things like that, that has nothing to do with this. And I don't really care about that. I concentrate on the grammar. That's what I care about. And I try to do it in a sort of humorous, but very stern, strict way, because this grammar is it's sacred to me it's very important and it's serious there's nothing casual about it there's nothing off the cuff about it if you're going to do it you got to do it 100 
that's the way I try to teach it so that people are safe out there when they use it. They're very calm and they come in in a peaceful and educational capacity. All right. Hope this wasn't too long and boring. If you like what it is I do, please subscribe, like the video, turn your notification bell on. If you'd like to request a consultation with me, contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and we'll set something up. Uh, maybe even if you want to apply for a correct grammar workshop. Thanks for watching.